Hi there. This video is on GDB, which is the GNU debugger. Uh, it may actually be a little bit longer than some of the other videos because GDB is a giant program that you really need to learn how to use for CS107. It's uh, super important that you learn how to use it. Uh, you will get lots and lots of practice using it, but you should uh, at least start out by learning some of the basic commands so that you don't get uh, overwhelmed when it comes to having to debug some big programs using GDB. Uh, GDB is a command line debugger, uh, unlike what you may have used in Eclipse or in Qt Creator. Uh, so it's all on the command line. Uh, surprise, surprise, because uh, we've been doing all these videos are involved the command line. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some of the commands uh, using a program as an example uh, so that we actually get a, a real example here. Um, here's the program I'm going to use. Uh, it's called square.c and it's a pretty simple program. Uh, basically there's a function called square which takes an integer and returns an integer and then in main uh, it actually says that it will square an integer and what we're going to do is we're going to use a command line argument to be the integer. So basically we're going to, in the, in the end, type square and then some number and it will just print out the, uh, it'll print the number that is uh, squared. So that's it. It uh, looks at the arguments, sees if it's actually uh, there, and it will uh, then try to square it using a uh, C standard library function. And then uh, it actually just runs the program, the function, which is a very simple program to square the number and return the value. Okay, so how do we uh, do this? Well, uh, we actually uh, type GCC and then dash G and dash OG, that's an uppercase O, not a zero, and then, uh, and then the program name and then dash O square, and this will compile it. Uh, again, for our class, normally we're gonna use make files uh, to do that, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you that we, we have to put the dash G and dash OG to make the debugger uh, work correctly in this case. Anyway, we can do that and it compiles just fine. And then if we type square, if we type square by itself, by the way, it says, uh, hey, you don't have the argument on there. So you need to type dot square and then some number. So if we type five, it will say the program will square an integer, five squared is 25. All right, so our program doesn't have any bugs, but we're gonna use GDB to actually look at it. And what we can do is say GDB and then square, and it will load the program up like this, and it gives you all this uh, stuff about uh, the GNU debugger, but when you see this little uh, parenthesis GDB, that's the prompt that you're at for GDB, meaning that you can start to uh, type you know, the commands there. Okay, uh, so what are some of these commands? Well, one of the first commands that you should probably know is help. <laughs> if you just type help, it gives you uh, some, it says, oh, here's some types of commands that you can do and so forth. But if you happen to know the command that you want to use, um, you just type help and then the command. So for instance, one command is list, uh, list, help list, and it says, uh, okay, uh, list the specified function or line, etc. Okay, so if I typed list main, because I know I have the main function, it will show us at least the beginning part, at least the first 10 lines of the program. Okay, if I typed list square, it will actually list the, it'll give you the line number for the program, and this is kind of cool. This is all embedded into the binary file for Square. Uh, actually, I think the list may be being read off the from the actual file itself, uh, the C file itself. But it uh, but it links them together so that it knows uh, what it's doing. So anyway, the help command is uh, super important so that you know uh, how to get help if you need it. <laughs> so that's the first one you should probably know. Another one is the info command, and if you have the in, the info command takes another command like breakpoints or something like that, and it says, oh, there's no breakpoints right now. So a lot of commands have, uh, you can say info and then something, and it will give you uh, that information. Okay, like info functions will give you all the functions. In fact, info functions gives you all the functions in that your program has the potential of using, um, and that would include all the standard library functions and so forth. So it's not necessarily the best command to use. Okay, uh, the next command I wanna show you is the run command. Uh, the run command, if we just type run, watch what happens. It'll actually run the program, and then it will say, this program is going to oh, we never had a command line argument, right? So we didn't need to do that. Well, the nice thing is you can say run, and then four, and it will, it will actually run, 
and uh, it will go all the way to completion, and then it will say that it exited normally. Great. Okay, so that's our program, and it ran, and, and that's fine. Okay, um, but the uh, what we want to normally do is stop the program somewhere in the middle of it. Okay, uh, so how do we do that? We actually type a break command. Okay, so let's say that we want to break on the first line of the code, break on main. So you can type break main and it says, oh look, I'm going to create a breakpoint um, on line six of your code, which happens to be the line where main actually starts. Okay, um, you can also type a line number. So if I say break, in fact, you can just do B for abbreviated. A lot of the GDB commands uh, you can abbreviate, but if I say B, uh, let's say 10, then it will say, oh, I'm going to make a breakpoint on line 10. If we had another file, we would type B and then the file name and then uh, the line number. Okay, so many times you'll do that. And, and anyway, it will create a breakpoint at that position. Now, if we type run 4, then it will actually stop the program at line 6. Okay, and what's nice about this is once you're stopped, if you just type L for list, it will list around where you stopped. So notice it didn't just list starting at line six, it listed around where we stopped, okay? And so you can kind of say, all right, look, I'm on uh, line six, which is where the breakpoint is, and we are, uh, this is the code that's around it. So that's kind of nice, okay? If you want to go to the, like, into the program and actually start running line by line, there's actually two different ways you can do it. Uh, the next command, abbreviated n, will actually take you to the next line in the code and it will not go through, it will not go into functions. So notice printf is a function. Even though you didn't write it, it's still a function. And if we type n, it will run the next line and step over the printf function. Okay, a lot of times this is called step over. And it will uh, do that line and then end up on the next line, right? Which in this case happens to be line 10. And it's, by the way, it's telling us that it's a breakpoint there too. Um, and here's another command, clear, will clear the breakpoint at that point. So we don't need any breakpoints anymore. Watch this, info breakpoints, right? And it says, oh, we've got one breakpoint at line, uh, at main, on line six. And uh, it, we've already hit it one time. So it gives you some nice information about that. But anyway, now, We've already typed a bunch of things here, and I say, well, where are we in the program? Well, here's another command, where. Where tells you exactly where in the program you are. So we're at line 10 in square.c, and if I do list, it lists around that area, right? So I know I'm at line 10, and this is about what I'm going to do, okay? Now, the other command that we could use besides next or n is s or step. Now, step will do a similar thing, like on this, in this case, it will step through line 10 because line 10 happens to be, uh, it's not a function, right? It's just doing a, a check and it does this. So if I type step, it will go to line 16, okay? Because line 16 happens to be a, uh, the next thing because the, the, it stepped over the if statement and, and it's not in the if statement, okay? Now watch this. If I type step again, and if I type step again, and by the way, just S works, or actually, you could actually just type return, I um, mean, it will do the last thing again. If I do return, uh-oh, watch this. Now it says we're in the ATOI function, and it says return blah, 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 and all this, and you say, oh, now I'm in trouble, okay? Because if I type where, it will say I'm actually, this, by the way, where types an entire stack trace. So it says now I'm in the ATOI function, and uh, on line 280, but, but you didn't write that function. So what do you do? If you keep typing step, You'll go now into some other file, and it even tells you it can't even find that file. Uh, so we seen it sounds like we're in trouble. What you can do is you can type finish, and it will finish the current function, do whatever it needs to do, and it will uh, return you to the last function. Now we happen to be two functions down, so if I type where again, we're still in uh, the ATOI function. But if I type finish again, it will then bring us back to our own program. Okay, so. Uh, so if you accidentally step into a function that's not yours, it may look a little scary, but there's nothing to be worried about. Okay, so now I'm on line 18, and I should have used n to step over those two function, that function, but uh, that's the way it goes. Now, I actually want to step into this function. Let's say I want to go into uh, the square function. If I type n, it will... Actually, let's just do it. If we type n, it will actually go into the function, and then 
can be done. And if I wanted to actually go, in, or it will skip over the function by doing it, and then it will be go to the next line, and then I'm now on line 20. So if I want to step into that, I would have to go back and rerun the program and step into it. In fact, let's do it. Okay, let's do this. Let's type a, uh, let's delete the first breakpoint, delete one. Okay, that deleted the first breakpoint. And if I type break on line 18 now, okay, it will do that. And if I type run and say four again, okay, it will say, oh, the program being debugged has started already. And you want to say, oh, all right, well, I know I'm restarting the program, so you can hit Y. And it then broke on line 18. So we're back to where we were again. And we are on line 18. And maybe we want to go into the square function. Okay, so if we want to go into the square function, we type S for step. And now look at this, we are now inside our square function. If we type L, we'll get a list of, oh, look at this, that's where we are. We're on line 27, and we are inside our square function. Very nice. Okay, now once we're in the square function, we can do a couple things. And here's a couple more commands that you, uh, that you might want to, uh, want to know. If you want to figure out what a variable value is, you can type print or just P and then the value name. Okay, so PX says that uh, X is four, and it actually gives it a little uh, number that you could refer to later, but it says uh, it's four. So X is four, and that's good because that's what we passed into our function. Okay, if I type PSQ for square, well, what line are we on, by the way? We are on line 27. Okay, we're right here. We're about to do this line. We haven't done it yet. We're about to do this line. Okay, and it says square is four. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Turns out that it hasn't been uh, initialized yet, so it's just some uh, kind of random value. Okay, in fact, we'll learn about what that value might be uh, a little bit later. Uh, but let's do this. Let's do next to, to uh, step over this line 27. Okay, and now we're on line 29, but guess what? We can type PSQ again, and now it will say that SQ has become 16. Okay, if you type N again, it will go back outside the function, back to the original function, and we can actually do n to printf. And if we want to do n to continue, it'll keep going and uh, so forth. And if you keep hitting n, it will continue like that. Okay, so those are a whole bunch of interesting commands. Let's, let's run it again. Um, by the way, I think if you just type run right now, it will assume that you meant to use the same command line as before. And so, um, so it does, so it actually um, did say that it was gonna run it with four. Uh, I'm not sure how you would go and run it again without any command line arguments at this point. But anyway, let's step into the uh, square function again. And so now we're at line 27 in here. And if we type where, it says, oh look, you're in the square function and that was called from main, okay? And don't worry about all the details of the other, other things here. By the way, if you ever see optimized out for a variable uh, name, it means that uh, it's not available uh, right at this point in time. And uh, in fact, it may not be available and you have to uh, do some other things to find it out. But sometimes that happens with variables. Uh, you get them optimized out because GCC thinks it knows a little better than you. All right. And uh, so anyway, we are in square and uh, we're at line 27. But let's say we wanted to look at what main was, if we go back kind of back to where main called it from. We can actually use the up command to uh, go back to the calling function and be in the calling function. So if we wanted to find out what num to square was, we can do up and then type print num to square and it will tell us that it's optimized out. So this is a, a situation where you go, oh, at this point it's already used that value, so it's already done something where it uh, can't get, get the value. But many times you'll be able to get the, the previous um, previous uh, variables like that. But anyway, we're in main right now, so if we want to go back to our calling function, we can type down, and it goes, oh, okay, now you're back at, at the main. So if we type print sq, it'll say four, and that was the value that was that was passed in. So not much you can do about some of the optimized out things, but there are, there are some tricks you can use uh, if you really need to get the variable uh, as, we, as you go through there. Uh, so what else do I want to show you? I showed you most of the basic commands. Um, you will use all the commands we've talked about like very extensively. Um, a couple other commands that are, we're going to use later in the class. Uh, there's the disassemble command, uh, which is like this. Okay, and be careful your eyes may bleed. Uh, we will learn all about this later. But if you type disassemble, it says that this is the function square. 
So the square function looks like this, and this is actually the assembly code for it. Okay, GCC produces from your C code assembly code that uh, we will learn about in the class. So it's kind of fun, and it actually is doing, it's moving some uh, values into registers. We will learn all about what those values are uh, later. And then it's multiplying them, and that's kind of what we're doing. And then it is returning from the function. So we will learn, uh, learn all about that. So let's actually go back to main function. And if we type disassemble now, I think it's just disas is all you need to type. It actually shows what main is. And all of this is what main is doing. Main is not a particularly long function, but uh, that's what it's doing. So you will use this. Um, uh, you will use this pretty frequently once we get to assembly language. So disassembling says, okay, I've got my C code, and now I'm going to see what the actual machine code or the assembly language code that the compiler produced looks like. So it's kind of fun. I think you'll enjoy it when we get to it. All right, there's one other thing I do want to show you, which is um, a special mode. If you type Control X, Control A, it brings you into this mode called TUI mode. And what's nice about this is you can actually scroll up and down it and it tells you where the breakpoints are. Like for instance, there's a breakpoint on line, oops, line 18 right there. And uh, right now we're on line 20. And if we, uh, if we type, I'm not sure why it just uh, went up to there. Sometimes you need, it's a bit buggy sometimes. If you type control L, it will refresh, uh, refresh the screen. Um, uh, let's see, might've been because we're inside the program, but um, I am not 100% sure right off the top of my head how we can make that bigger. But Control X, Control A goes back again. Let's see Control X, Control A. No, it's not going to be smaller like this. Um, let's see, where are we here? We're in main, at line 20. Let's just run it again. Start from the beginning, line 18. Control X, Control A. Yeah, I'm not sure why it is so small, but I'll have to find that out. But anyway, point is if I type S, it will actually step into the function up here and I can continue to run my commands down here. So it's in a slightly nicer way, uh, once you make the window a little bit bigger, to actually uh, to work with your code. So it makes it a little bit more user-friendly than just the command line arguments. Okay, so that is uh, to get out of GDB, just type quit, and then if it says it's still active, it will, um, uh, it will actually quit. So you have to quit, and oops, quit, and then enter, oops, maybe not, quit. Let's see, I'm trying to quit. Oh, I think you have to type Control X, Control A, and then quit, and then it will say yes, right? Uh, so anyway, that's GDB uh, in a nutshell, in a very, very small nutshell. Uh, you will use GDB very, 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 very often in CS107, and you should get used to, uh, used to it as quickly as you can. Thanks.